everyone, Usha Pandit, your Mind Springs English teacher. Today, I am going to do a lesson from my book, Empowering English. It's a series that goes from 1 to 8. It's used in some of the best schools in India. What it, what's different about this is that it's a book that not just has literature, but it also has a lot of skills. The best English is learnt when children are autonomous with skills. Autonomous means they can do it on their own. So if you teach a lot of poetry, children should be able to not only enjoy poetry, they should be able to interpret unseen poetry. Otherwise, if you are constantly doing question answers and meanings, that's not called education. Okay, because they cannot do anything on their own after that. So today I'm going to Jabberwocky from my book in grade 5 because a lot of teachers find it hard to do this poem Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll. He wrote Through the Looking Glass, Alice in Wonderland and this is a part of those books. Okay, so Jabberwocky is this poem that is done in several schools and it's not really a poem that's rare. In that, in that sense or unusual in that sense but the poem itself is a fantasy what I want to do with this uh, poem today is to show you how if you read the poem right a lot of the understanding of the poem or the story in the poem will come through in the way in which you deliver the poem so that's very important that you read it with expression, with passion, with emotion. These are very important parts of poetry teaching. So we're going to understand the story. We're going to look at it as a ballad, something that people sing and they are epics. They, are, uh, they have come down through word of mouth and they sing about heroes. So this is one such hero we're going to look at today. We're going to look at portmanteau words and what they mean and what they are. We are also going to look at how a nonsense poem is actually set in a grammatical pattern. So we are going to do a lot of grammar with this poem and it's quite exciting. Okay, And after all that your children can act out the poetry, they can um, uh, make their own nonsense poems, they can substitute it with real words and see what it might have been like had the poet used proper English words. So there's lots of little things that you can do with Jabberwocky that's quite, quite exciting. And they can do it in groups and that can be a lot of fun. So there's great value in this poem and let's start with the reading. So Jabberwocky by Lewis Carroll, it was brillig and the slithy toves did gyre and jimble in the way. All mimsy were the boar of robes, and the home rats out grey. Beware the jabberwock, my son, the jaws that bite, the claws that catch. Beware the jijip bird, and shun the frumious panda snatch. He took his vorpal sword in hand. Long time the maxim foe he sought. So rested by the tum tum tree and stood a while in thought. And as he stood in uffish thought, the jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the tulgy wood and burbled as it came. One, two, one, two, and through and through. The vocal blade went snicker snick. He left it dead and with his head came galumphing back. And hast thou slain the Jabberwock? Come to my arms, my beamish boy, O oh, frabious day. Kalu, Kalay! He trotted in his joy. It was brillig. And the slithy toves did gyre and jimble in the wave. All mimsy were the moor groves, and the mom rats outgrave. So 
So if you read it like this, it's clear that he took it in his hand, his head, the head, he left it dead and took its head and he went galumphing back. So it's clear that the hero has killed the Jabberwock. The Jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the Talji wood and burbled as it came. Clearly, it's a very, very scary monster. And the boy is very brave. He took his wobble sword. The wobble sword. Now, there are a lot of nonsense words in this poem, aren't there? Wobble, burble, uh, galumphe, frabius, kalu, kole, all sorts of words. And these words, twas brillig, slivy, gyre, jimbal, mimsy, borrow groves, outgrave. Definitely not English. And yet, we made sense of it. If you read it, the children will be able to make sense of it. And it's a great way to look at an epic where a hero kills a monster. Now that's a, a very, um, uh, what shall we say, a very common epic theme. So it's not really something for you to uh, explain. There is no need to explain. If you talk to them about Ramayana and Mahabharat, which are our own epics, then children understand the idea of the hero killing uh, the monster or a, the villain extremely well. So therefore, let's look at what we can do with this poem. So if you look at it grammatically, if you say, "twas brillig, twas of course is it was brillig. So you've got this. And the slithy toes. Now you've got the here. Do you notice the? And I would have told you many times that after the, you will always have a noun. Okay? So it can be here, you have the noun. And what is slithy then? It will have to be an adjective, isn't it? So what you find here is you will be able to sort it out, the poem. Grammatically, it is not strange. It's the same thing, the words are different. So what do you want toves to be? Toves can be caves or toves can be trees. So it can be tall trees or it can be damp caves. It can be anything. So, and dig gyre. Now you put dig there. A helping verb. So did gyre, did sway, did dance, did swing. Now when a poem like that, now the first thing to look at is this first paragraph and ask yourself, does it sound like a happy place or does it sound sound like a place that is a bit scary? So if we read it again, it was brillant, brillant. And the slithy toves did gyre and jimble in the wave. All mimsy were the borrow groves and the mom rats out the grave. It doesn't sound at all. If you ask students to tell you what it sounds like, they always, always tell you that it sounds scary. So it's probably going to be a story that's a bit scary because the setting there, that seems to be the setting, seems to have an element of mystery, of, of, an, of an eerie kind of uh, a place, probably a forest. It's got that sort of thing. And maybe Mimsy sounds like mist and Momrats sounds like something that's not really pleasant. So you've got a setting that seems to have a sort of miasmic, a certain sort of depressive feel about it. And if you look at the next stanza, what does it say? Beware the Jabberwock, my son. If you look at these speech marks, what's happening? It's very clearly someone talking. Who is talking to whom? You see this, my son? So it's clearly a father talking to a son. Now these are not things that you need to tell students if you are doing this in a classroom. You need to elicit it from them. You need to ask them. Tell them, take a look at the punctuation marks and tell me, is there any dialogue or conversation or anything that someone is saying and they should be able to pick out these marks for you. So beware the Jabberwock, my son, beware, look at that word, beware the Jabberwock, my son, beware the Jabberwock, my son. When you read it, if your gestures, 
your facial expressions show beware students will get it immediately so beware the jabberwock my son the jaws that bite the claws that catch clearly a monster beware the jubjub bird so there's another one there the second one and shun shun the frumious bender snatch three monsters frumious what could frumious mean could mean anything but it can't mean uh, the gentle bander snatch could it it couldn't because you want to say shun it shun avoid it you will only avoid unpleasant so it should be something like fears or something like uh, horrendous horrible terrible can be any of those words there bander snatch he took his wapal sword in hand wapal sounds sharp to me wapal sounds vicious wapal sounds deadly sword in hand long time long time the mangsum foe he saw foe is a word we know it's the enemy mangsum foe now that's a funny word we don't know what that means but put anything there if it's an enemy you can't go, you're not going to put kind and sweet there what are you those are positive words so a negative word there a mangsum foe would be a man maniacal foe a foe that is monstrous a foe that is uh dangerous right man some foe he saw so rested by the tum tum tree so this place seems to have all these amazing names chup chup bird and tum tum tree and it's got a certain sonorous beauty about it a certain exotic beauty about this this whole place isn't it you got the jabber walk and the panda snatch and the chup chup bird and the tum tum tree i love it and stood a while in thought tired stood under the tree and as a fish thought he stood the java walk with eyes of flame came whiffling now this word whiffling doesn't really sound like sniffling because sniffling is it's a it's a gentle word whiffling sounds more like something that's moving at deadly speed came through the talji wood see this word talji Again, you have an adjective there, talji. What what would talji mean? Would it mean something sticky? Would it mean something thick, thorny, talji, mushy? You can you can play with it. You can play with the sound and say what kind of feeling does it give me? There are no right and wrong answers, right? So through the talji wood and burbur. See this word burbur. Quite scary. This boy standing there, and then this burbling monster comes in, and he has to be really smart. And he was. Look at his resourcefulness. Look at his presence of mind. One, two, one, two, and through and through, the wapal blade went snick a snick. There's a certain quick action about that whole business there that is so very very exciting. He left it dead, and with its head, he came galumphing back. If you do this, then children know he's on a horse. And galumphing definitely sounds like galloping. So it's easy. Hast thou slain the jabberwock? It's complete surprise. Hast thou slain the jabberwock? The jabberwock! Oh my God! Come to my arms, my beamish boy. And he saw me on Fabio's day, Carlo Colle. It's like saying, "Hooray, hooray! You've slain me, slain the Jabberwock." He chortled. He chortled in his joy, so he can't contain himself. It was brillig, and the slithy toves did gyre and gimble in the wake. All mimsy were the borer groves, and the mome rats outgrabe. So it's an amazing poem. Everything you found that the grammar can be fitted in beautifully. You look at the punctuations. You look at the exclamation marks, and you know that the poet is trying to get your attention. And you understood the poem. Oh, you can get your students to do it on their own. You don't need. You don't have to do any explaining. But if you are explaining anything. then it has to be with a sense of passion and excitement and there has to be a participation from students in your classroom and then you've got 
a lot of thinking questions. I always put thinking questions in my books. Although no one understands several words in the poem, they are not English, is it possible to see the story? The answer is yes. Which words gave you the clue to the story? And then you might get your students to pick out all those words that showed them that this is a story about a hero killing a monster. That should not be heard. The three creatures in the story is a no-brainer. Does the son listen to the warning? And what does he do? Again, it's an easy one. What is the father's reaction to the son's achievements? He was thrilled, wasn't he? So there's a vocabulary that you want. He was thrilled, he was delighted, he, was, he celebrated his son's achievements. You need to have good words when teach children answer questions. Don't make it, don't dumb them down. The poem is an epic ballad. Rama and Mahabharata, I've talked to, just talked to you about it and they are long, read the notes on the ballad. So there are notes on the ballad, read it and see whether they, it fits the ballad, right? This is a short one. Does the sun come across as a true epic hero? In modern times, look at that, could a female hero have killed the Jabberwock? Why should it always be a man? Why should it always be a boy? Couldn't it have been a daughter killing the Jabberwock? It's something to think about. A gender equality question there that I think is good for students to think about in this day and age. Underline all the nonsense words and decide that they are completely nonsensical. Or if some, there's a special flavor about them that actually gives you a feel. Like I said, the Talji wood. What does it make you feel? You know, It definitely doesn't give me the feeling of dark wood. Dark woods. Not, it doesn't give me that feeling, but it could give somebody else that feeling. Explain slithy, uh, uh, slithy toves and slimy. Does it sound like slimy, slippery? Um, and then you come to these portmanteau. Portmanteau is a bag, actually, that has two compartments, okay? Like a, like a briefcase. So portmanteau is typically a word that, where you take two words and mix them together and you get a new word. So for example, the word motel as a motor and a hotel. You put them together and you get motel and that's a portmanteau word. Similarly, you have words like Cinemax and Multiplex, Intercom, uh, Infomercial. All these are portmanteau words and we use a lot of that uh, you know, nowadays, especially with the computer age. So that might be a good one for children to know. The Jabberwock, the Jujube bird and the Bandersnatch, those three monsters, two of them are not described. So we are asking you to do a description of those two monsters. Maybe draw them and then talk a little, give us a description, tell us what they eat, where they live, uh, what sort of uh, prey do they like. Write a small little science bit report. That would do many things for you. You would be writing a report, a scientific report and you would also be using poetry and you would also be describing monsters, so that makes it really exciting for say 10 year olds going to a grade 5 and that would be fabulous. Does the word Jabberwocky suit the monster? What do you think? So some might say yes, some might say no, it sounds too cute. Jabber, Jabber sounds like a chattering little monkey, Jabberwocky doesn't quite suit. Then what would you call the monster? So that's another question. So you'll find a lot of, the questions have a lot of depth. The questions have a lot of possibilities of doing different things. And in one shot, getting children to multitask and integrate subjects. Language, as I said, nouns, adjectives, verbs, I'll pull out, ask them to pull out all that from these sentences. And it is possible, like I showed you in the first two lines. And then you have them making their own poems of nonsense words using the Jabberwocky. So Jabberwocky is an exciting poem. I really cannot understand why there should be so much fear of poetry that has got a few nonsense words in it. It's a brilliant poem and I hope you get some help from this video in how to make it a really, really exciting classroom. Hand over the, um, uh, the power, uh, hand over the classroom to children because it belongs to students and allow them to 
actually lead it sometimes and that will also be a great exercise in a flipped classroom because you are essentially allowing students then to come up with ideas as they should. So I hope you enjoyed that. So till we meet again, make sure you subscribe, go to our website and buy the books that you find there because they are excellent. Do ask me to come and give you a demonstration if you want to subscribe to Empowering English in your schools because it's a series that goes from 1 to 8 and it's absolutely wonderful. If you want me to do any other lessons, either from Empowering English or from outside, do write it in the comments box and I will um, make sure that I, I do it for you. So till we meet again, till we meet next time, keep smiling and happy teaching.